Hello and welcome to In Focus. I'm your host, Steve Hare. NCW Life would like to welcome John Devaney with us today on our program. John is the executive director of the Washington State Tree Fruit Association. A little background on the, uh, the group. Uh, you were formed, gosh, what, 10 years ago? Uh, how long Just ago? Just five years ago. Five years yes. ago. And uh, it was the result of the merging of four organizations. Maybe you can tell us more. That's correct. We took four longtime industry organizations, the Washington State Horticultural Association, the Washington Growers Clearinghouse Association, Wenatchee Valley Traffic Association, and the Yakima Valley Grower Shippers Association, and merged them together. They all were forming, they were all representing different parts of the tree fruit industry, whether small independent growers or vertically integrated packers. Uh, and they had more in common than they had uh, separating them. So they decided that to be more efficient and serve the whole industry better, they would merge those organizations together. Suffice it to say, it's one of the largest organizations of its type here in the state. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you represent all facets, I guess, of the industry, don't you? That's right. Uh, the growers, packers, and marketers of all deciduous tree fruit, apples, pears, cherries, and stone fruit here in the state. The reason we're talking with John today is because uh, we're in day two of the annual Hort Expo and Trade Show. That's correct. 115th annual Hort Show. That's right. Since it goes back to the uh, the show has been done since uh, the early 1900s under the sponsorship of the Washington State Horticultural Association, which was one of those organizations that merged. So we've continued that great tradition. And we're in the middle of this year's conference. That's wonderful. And it's all things tree fruit uh, oriented uh, in terms of apples, cherries, stone fruit, and everything else. Yes, and it's not just talking about the fruits themselves. It's all of the issues that touch the growers and packers and marketers of those products. Whether it's economic uh, concerns, what is the global economy going to look like? What is the international trade situation? How do you do succession planning for your business? Uh, to horticultural questions like how do you keep pests out of your orchard and really grow the highest quality fruit in the world? Well, it's very timely that we have a chance to talk to you today, John, uh, especially with the news coming out of Congress today. Uh, the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced earlier today that the uh, USMCA agreement, the trade agreement with Mexico and Canada, will be going to a vote of Congress. And I'm sure that the growers are, uh, are very uh, welcoming for that news. That's very good news. You know, when you plant a permanent crop like orchards uh, that you make many thousands of dollars per acre uh, in investment before you see any kind of return, you need to know some predictability on your trading environment. So it's good news that that agreement, which has been concluded, will get ratified, it appears, by Congress and will have some stability in that, in that trading relationship. What kind of an effect has that had, not having an agreement in place? I mean, well, we've been working under the old NAFTA. Right, agreement. yes. Well, I, th I think the uncertainty was the biggest problem. Uh, there was, uh, we have had a very strong trading relationship with both Canada and Mexico. Uh, they are usually our number one and two export markets. Mexico has been our biggest customer for many years now. Uh, and so it is very important that we know that we'll be able to continue to serve those customers. So uh, what do you see as the major uh, uh, let's say, elements of that trade agreement, at least in terms of what our growers are well, concerned Well, for about. tree fruit, the, the best news is that not a lot will change because we have had a good relationship. It does make some improvements in other aspects of the, of the trading relationship that were problems for U.S.-Mexico and U.S.-Canada relations. Uh, for example, there have been problems with getting U.S. wines marketed in Canada, and there was a, a excessive subsidy of Canadian dairy products. Uh, so those issues are being addressed in that agreement, which will be benefit for agriculture, uh, but really there's not a significant changes for tree fruit. It's just knowing that we will not have any additional retaliatory or disruptive tariffs or disagreements between the two countries, and we can make long-term plans about marketing to and selling to those customers. Now if we can just do something about China. China, India, there's another, a number of markets where we're still negotiating long-term trade agreement changes that would benefit uh, both countries, we hope. Uh, there are changes that need to happen in specifically in the China trade relationship, uh, and that has been a serious problem for cherry exporters in particular, since China has been one of our most significant uh, and best paying cherry export customers. I know that uh, for the tree fruit growers of Washington State, labor has been a big issue. Labor is always a big issue. It is our, I mean, we talked about it in Mexico, it is an export relationship. We also have a uh, labor trading relationship with Mexico, where we have a lot of Mexican nationals who've come up to the United States and to Washington State in particular to do a lot of really important work in our orchards that a lot of U.S. residents don't have a lot of interest in doing anymore. They've got, moved on to year-round full-time employment in other industries. 
Uh, so we, we estimate that somewhere around 60% of every orchard's variable production costs are labor related. So it's a big part of how we produce fresh fruits and vegetables in, in the United States. And getting some changes to that uh, uh, immigration system around temporary and permanent agricultural work uh, is really critical. Well, currently you're operating under the H-2A program. What are the problems with that that needed to be changed? Uh, the program is really difficult to use. Uh, it doesn't provide a lot of flexibility for employees either. You know, there is a complex certification process and most significantly for growers in the last few years, uh, as the labor market has tightened, uh, the wages have escalated significantly. And I, I'm not talking about market wages, I'm talking about government imposed wages uh, that are ostensibly designed to uh, prevent any harm to the domestic workforce, but as we know, there's not a, there's a diminishing number of domestic workers wanting to work in seasonal agriculture. Mm -hmm. So, the actual harm to people that don't want to take a job is hard to calculate. Uh, but in a labor shortage situation, that has meant much higher wages, where we've seen five or six or seven percent annual increases in the required minimum cost of labor. Uh, that's not sustainable for growers who are already losing money. Uh, so getting some predictability in the visa process, but also putting some guardrails around how fast wages can escalate uh, and that you don't change the required wage rate after you've signed a contract. Uh, once you've signed a contract to work for someone at a certain wage, you shouldn't have the government change the rules in the middle of that contract. You can make that change next year. So there'll be some very positive changes just in terms of that visa program. Mm -hmm. Now, some other important changes in that bill are that it will legalize or provide a pathway to a legalized status for the current undocumented workforce, which is a significant part of the, the workforce. Obviously, they all show documents showing themselves to be legally authorized to work in the U.S., but studies have shown that many of those documents would not bear closer scrutiny uh, in government investigation. So we want to make sure that those who are working on uh, false documents right now, but are doing work no one else wants to do, uh, and but are productive members of our society, can be moved into a legal status and come out of the shadows. Okay. Uh, that bill would, would allow that to happen. And once that has happened and we have a reformed guest worker program, it would provide additional enforcement as well by, by imposing a requirement to use the E-Verify system for new hires in agriculture, which is not currently the case. And similar to the USMCA agreement, uh, which is going to be voted on by Congress, we understand that the uh, Workforce Modernization Act, which uh, which the H-2A uh, provisions are included in, will also be voted on by Congress, according to our uh, yes. House Representative uh, Dan Newhouse. Yeah, well, obviously, when they're talking about impeachment, interesting things can happen <laughs> with the congressional schedule. Uh, but that is scheduled to come up on um, just uh, tomorrow uh, on the House floor, uh, and there is a good chance that that will move forward. Uh, as contentious as things are in Washington D.C. now. Uh, and as difficult an issue as immigration uh, is to talk about, that bill was negotiated on a bipartisan basis with participation from both agriculture and agricultural labor advocates like the United Farm Workers, and pretty much it has equal uh, bipartisan sponsors. So that's pretty unusual in this current environment. So I think it has a really good chance of passage if, it, if it's brought to the House floor as scheduled. Let's talk about the show, uh, yes. the uh, annual meeting ongoing here at the Convention Center in Wodanchi. A lot of technological advances that will be on display at your trade show. Yes, there are quite a few. Uh, everything from uh, new hand equipment to robotic harvesters are on display. So there's a lot of interesting technology for growers to take a look at and try out and decide if, if it's worth the investment. So I've seen a lot of people walking the trade show floor and, and looking at what's there. Okay. Also, uh, this, uh, this year is kind of special because uh, we've unveiled a brand new apple variety, That's which right. is the Cosmic Crisp. It is. It, uh, it went onto the store shelves on December 1st. What are you hearing out there from consumers? Hearing really good things. I personally really like it. Uh, I think a lot of uh, retailers are frustrated that they can't get as many as they want, which is a good problem to have as a grower and packer. Uh, the, the apple is uh, very popular, um, and I think it's going to do well. It, it is a challenge in this uh, produce environment. If you go into the grocery stores, there's a lot of choices for consumers, not just among different kinds of apples, but all sorts of other new fresh produce items. You know, it wasn't that many years ago that uh, it wasn't so common to see those mini citrus, for example, and now there's bags of those, you know, little mandarin oranges all the time. And, That's true. And a lot more year-round berries, for example. So it is a very competitive environment, and we think that the, these new apple varieties are going to help us maintain 
uh, consumer preference in, in the produce aisle. It's not your grandpa's orchard anymore, is it? No, but that's one of the things that we talk about at our uh, annual meeting and conferences that things are always changing in our industry. People tend to think of agriculture as fairly static, but it is always evolving, always changing, and there's always a lot of new technology, and growers really work hard to keep up with that, and that's why so many of them do come to our conference every year to learn what's going on and, and adopt the best practices. Good deal. Well, we can find you on the web, I know, at uh, the Washington State, or Washington State Tree Fruit Association website. That's right, wstfa.org. Uh, we put out a lot of just general information and a, a lot of training and educational materials for growers as well so that in between our conference they can stay up to date on the latest regulatory and safety requirements so that uh, they're doing things as well as they can. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. Anything else you'd like to add before we let you go? Just always a pleasure to be here in Wenatchee. Uh, we really enjoy being downtown at the convention center. Our attendees really like it too. Uh, this is uh, a great place to be. Great. John Devaney, Executive Director of the Washington State Tree Fruit Association, joining us today on In Focus, I'm Steve Hare.